What if I told you that I could prove afterlife spirit communication is a reality? Would you listen? Well, I can and I will. Take my hand. Let's go. Psychic Reverend Donna Serafina, proving the existence of afterlife and their ability to communicate from beyond. January 31st, 2020, Rexburg, Idaho. More than two months after a November well check turned up empty for missing siblings, Tylee Ryan, age 16, and Joshua J.J. Vallow, age 7, their whereabouts were still unknown. At a time when the world was asking, where are the children? Are they still alive? On January 31st, 2020, there were still no leads. Both the family and the FBI were asking for help. On January 31st, 969 miles south of Rexburg, a psychic in San Diego, California, Reverend Donna Serafina, is the only person who can answer that question. It's interesting looking back now as we put this documentary together to see what was occurring prior to my involvement in the case of the missing Idaho children. So up until that point, in November, there had been a welfare check. So it's towards the end of November, they realized that um, the children were unaccounted for. When they went back and got a warrant to go search to look for clues, Chad and Lori had fled the state and nobody knew where they were. But it was clear that Lori was not cooperating. So, But at that point, I had never heard of these people and I had not seen these video clips. On January 31st, 2020, I uploaded the first of 12 readings. 10 of these readings were uploaded prior to the discovery of the remains of Tylee and JJ. I accurately described in that reading on January 31st, extreme details, graphic, extensive, very detailed descriptions of the murder of both children. At a time when people were mostly assuming that Lori had just hid them with their friends at a prepper camp or in some cult and that the kids were just in hiding, they didn't have any idea what state they were in. It wasn't publicly known when they were last seen. Nobody had these answers. And I uploaded the answers on January 31st and sent it off to law enforcement. And if you go back to that reading, Tylee Ryan, most important, uploaded January 31st. I talk all about the murder. And what I can say is, honestly, I am the only living witness to the murders of Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallo, as well as Charles Vallo. I am the only living witness to these murders. I saw what happened. She saw what happened. Reverend Donna Serafina uploaded a series of 12 videos to YouTube between January 31st, 2020 and June 9th, 2020, when the bodies of the children were finally recovered by law enforcement. Reverend Donna Serafina's witness account of these murders is very graphic and spares no details. Okay, so the boy shows me he's playing with something. The mom comes over to him. Ah. And then I'm feeling like the mom putting um, 
going, it's okay, to the boy, it's okay, it's okay, everything's all right, it's okay, everything's all right. And then just, she has some, like, giant plastic bag and she just puts it over his head really fast and starts wrapping something around. I don't know if it's tape or what. And then the father sees that she's going gung-ho on that and so he runs over to help her. Like, they pin him down. And the father's trying to, or the man's f- trying to pinch his nose so he can't breathe. And so that's at the doorway of where there's a bedroom, the boy's bedroom, where the bottom bed's a little whiter, and the comforters are navy blue. So he's, she's leading him back into the bedroom when she kind of does that from behind. Okay, so I'm seeing um, Lori is the person who did it. She put the bag over the head. She also feels like she did the duct tape. Like, she's just not... She just goes, like, full bore steam ahead. Um, She's got, like... She's got... You would think she would have done the duct tape first, but I'm seeing her... um, Okay, so it's like she puts the duct tape, she puts that bag over his head and she's like twisting it around trying to like make sure he can't get air. And, but then, and then some, I know some man is there and I, okay, so, so, okay, I'll just get, because I know from, I know there's someone man there that comes and helps her, but. Um, right now, I haven't seen that yet, because what I'm getting, they're still getting, they want to show me that she was struggling because she she was, like, holding this on his head, and he's trying to push her hands away, so he's trying to push her arm, he's trying to push her chest, but he's not strong enough, and she's holding it down, and she's trying to get this duct tape, uh, she's trying to use her teeth to get duct tape with one hand while she's trying to hold his neck, She's trying to squish his neck, um, hold the bag on his neck, but he's trying to fight her. Um, he's trying to like, um, you know, I don't know if he can really scratch, but he's trying to like get her away, push her away. Uh, he's struggling. So it's not being as easy as she wanted. Um, that's when the, the, the guy, whoever's there, that's when the guy comes across and he, um, and he holds now he holds the face now he's got his whole hand over the face and his hand over the neck while she's uh, pulling out this duct tape now and she's wrapping duct tape around where his neck is and he's wearing pajamas when all this happens he's not in bed but he's wearing pajamas um i'm not positive but i i do definitely feel they are flannel pajamas Once you arrived in the autopsy room, what was the first thing you observed? The first thing I observed was the black bag that was covered in duct tape that had had been removed from the area underneath the tree by the pond was placed on the table. Okay, and you recognize that as the same black bag? Yes. Um, how did you recognize that? the duct tape and the black plastic that had still had dirt all over it. I observed a small child uh, in red pajamas, red pajama shirt, red pajama pants. I also observed a light and blue blanket that had been placed on top of him. Okay. The amount of duct tape that was covering the body. Okay. Uh, where was that duct tape located? On the head, arms, and feet. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the head area. Uh, um, when, when you looked at the head, uh, what, did you, what did you observe there? The head had a white plastic bag over the top of it. It appeared to be a normal trash bag, had a red drawstring. Uh, it appeared to be the expandable type of trash bag with the waffle style pattern on top of the head. Okay. Uh, and you had mentioned duct tape there. How, where did you observe the duct tape? 
There was duct tape that were, was tightly wrapped around this way, tightly from his chin to his forehead area. Uh, several layers of duct tape tightly wrapped. Okay. Uh, what did you observe the medical examiner and his team do with, with that material? They ended up uh, using a small sharp instrument and cut down the middle of it to expose what was underneath. Okay, and, and when they exposed underneath, what did you observe? An additional piece of duct tape that was stretched from jawline to jawline across the mouth. Okay, and when you say across the mouth, at this point, were you looking at this child's face? I was. Okay. Um, okay, and, and can you, uh, who was that little boy? Joshua Vallow. Okay. Um, were there any other items of, uh, were, were there any other Items of interest to you on that body? Yes. Uh, can you describe uh, what were they? His hands were folded about chest high. Detective, can you lift that a little bit higher so that you can see? Folded like this, chest high. He had duct tape continuously wrapped from elbow all the way around his arms, over his hands, all the way to his right elbow. Uh, several layers of duct tape that were tightly wrapped. Um, and the way, best way I can describe it is he had a ball of duct tape over where his hands would be. Okay. Uh, was that duct tape removed? Yes, it was. And what did you observe after that? His wrists were also bound with another layer of duct tape. Okay. Uh, after that, was there anything else that caught your attention about the way uh, this child was bound? Uh, yes, I, I noticed that his ankles were also bound uh, with duct tape as well. Okay. The murder of Tylee Ryan was unspeakable horror for Donna to witness. Donna describes the spirit of Tylee Ryan to be the most driven to have her story told than any other spirit she has ever worked with. <laughs> a very, very strong team of two very strong personalities, a very two strong spirit people. Tylee Ryan wants every single person out there to know what her mother did to her. So when you hear these graphic, and I'm having full body chills right now, by the way, um, when you hear the graphic information on here, please know that Tylee Ryan wants you to know. She wants you to know what her mother did. Please take me along with you on the course of events that led up to and prior to the murder. I feel like I had to protect JJ from my mom because I feel like my mom, my mom, um, is, is it, you know, got this sinisterness. And, and I feel like I need to protect JJ. And I already know my uncle's weird. But my mom's, um, like, crazy, gone crazy, gone nuts. Like, not even in this time zone, you know what I mean? She's real stressed out listening to them talk. It's like... They think it's great, all the bad stuff they do. And they talk about it, like, right in front of her and JJ. It's shocking to her. She feels shocked. I feel like we go back out Yellowstone. I'm going to say this back up the 20. Back out of Yellowstone that way. The direction of Island Park. I feel like this happens almost instantly. And I mean, they just see their opportunity and take it. Um, I feel like they walk her to say, oh, let's go look over here. Come over here. I, she doesn't want to go look over there. It is important. Alex and Lori taking Tylee and they want to show her something outside. Um, and at the same time, they both attacked her and Lori was hitting her in the head with a metal pipe. 
and Alex was choking her with a rope. I don't. I don't know. I'm seeing it. I'm still seeing it. I, I, I'm seeing. I'm seeing Tylee hit, hit in the head, um. Yeah, uh, they're both doing it at the same time. Okay, so um, so um, he's in the head. He's got the rope. He likes pulling the rope, and then and then Laura is just trying to smash her. Oh, like Alex is trying to hold it while he's like pinning her down uh, by her. Literally got his knee in her back, and 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 Laura is just smashing her over and over in the head. Uh, he's holding the rope. He's got the rope twisted. He's holding it choking her at the same time and then he's got her face they he's got her face down he's got his knee in her back and Lori's smashing her in the head over and over with it like um some kind of pipe is this correct yeah i got i got literally literally got chills on both legs this is correct uh this is correct i got chills on both legs it's bad. They're still doing it. It went on. It took them a little while, I think, to kill her. Uh, huge chills. Huge, huge. They're getting bigger. Oh, my God. Massive pressure. Chills going up to my hips now. Tylee really suffered when they murdered her. This is important. It's important. And I got chills all the way up to my waist now. Um, it, it's really important because when they go to court, this isn't about sensational. This they made her she suffered she suffered this wasn't a quick bullet to the head this was them doing this the quick quiet or they whatever they did they alex is straining on her the mother's just smashing her in the head over her, and this is going on and on this is not a quick one minute death It's like she's trying to gasp for air, um, and the um, like rooms. You know how the visions are going off, and um, like the equilibrium's going off. Like she's on the ground, pinned on the ground, being choked and having her head smashed at the same exact time, and um, it, it takes them several minutes, though. Uh, uh, Lori just keeps hitting her in the head. Um, Lori, I think, even after she's unconscious, is smashing her in the head. Head still. Uh, Lori's. Um, it's overkill. It feels like overkill on the head there. Because Alex finally, you know, gets up and is like, you know, she's dead. She's dead, Mon, leave it alone, or something like that. She's dead. Okay, so now Lori looks at Alex like, what are we going to do with the body? Like, She's not having any feelings whatsoever. It's not like, oh, I just killed my daughter. She's just like evil's taken over her. Darkness. She's not, there's no feeling, remorse, gross, whatever. Nothing. Nothing. Not nothing. And it's, and it's beyond, it's, it's, it's a movement towards, now let's deal with the body. Not like, okay, let's take a minute or what to do. It's now let's deal with the body. It, 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 there's not even a thought about the murder that she just murdered her own daughter, even the slightest bit. I feel like they put Tylee up on this table. But I'm, it's almost like there's a, would you call it a giant cutting board? Would you have something with a giant cutting board that actually has drain? thing on all sides of it small part so you can push not just blood to drain into this 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 metal thing below um but pieces so pieces of organs legs arms hands whatever 
all the pieces, like, and uh, what you would do with an animal. And you, so you can put them in there and then afterwards you have like a hose kind of thing that you can pull out and you clean everything off. So this thing is actually made to be able to wash pretty much not guts down it, cause, but to wash stuff like that to get all the extra yuck off everything and all the extra blood off the meat when you're doing all this or something or clean it or something, you know, but. And so then there, and then you have all these pieces of her. She's in like lots of pieces. And then you could spray it off and that's going to spray off lots of blood, right? So um, there's lots of pieces like her head's off. Um, I see. I see lots of pieces. Let's just say I see pile. I see pile of pieces. The next clip was taken from the video Psychic Reverend Donna Serafina uploaded to YouTube January 31st, 2020, four months before the remains of these children were discovered. I'm waiting to see if I get a chill because I don't, um, Tylee, are you, is anybody able to communicate with me on Tylee's behalf tonight? Is she, I feel like she's here. Okay, so I'm just seeing images. So instead of worrying about who's talking to me, I'm just going to see images. Um, with mediumship. It's really interpretation, and that's where people can be wrong. So it's like I could I should say what I'm seeing because if it means something different to the person listen listening to this, that's how that case will get solved. Being said, and that's how mediumship works, and that's where the skeptics will come in and try to tear it apart. But the fact is, this is real, and this is how it works. But we're back at the house now. What I'm seeing is so gross, I don't necessarily even want to say it because it just cannot be true. And I'm going to delete this from whatever. If I put something up, I'm going to delete this. But it's just sickening. I see them starting a fire and roasting. It's like at this little summer home thing. And there's a um, where you could you could conceivably like roast a pig there. It feels like they're roasting a leg, like the leg of the girl. I swear to God. I can't. It's hard for me to believe how this could be happening in my mind. So what I'm going to do is I can't, like, I, I can't believe anyone would, would do that. So since it's so unreal, what it's burning the front of my forehead, too. And so... I'm just going to say a prayer of, I would like God, energy, love, energy, pure light, so that only which is truthful, which is real, which is for the highest good, and all those entities that work in love and light to assist in facilitating communication with this young girl here. It's unspeakable horror. I feel like he chopped her leg off. I feel like with the girl, he's chopping her body up. Like a butcher would. Jeez, like with a meat cleaver. First, he was using something else for whatever I was talking about a minute ago. I saw a different kind of. I don't know what he was taking her um, leg, her thigh off with, but it was bigger than the meat cleaver. But then on her knee bone, he was using a meat cleaver. 
He's like literally in, there's a garage and off a building uh, not connected to the little house, the little summer house. You know, it could be a permanent house, but that's the type and style and the feeling I have. That's all. And it feels like he had the daughter's body on that workbench and he's he's literally chopping it up. He's got plastic everywhere, but it seems to me there would be like so much blood evidence there. You know, like all over the floor or in, in the cracks at the, at the end that because he didn't, he didn't do that great of a job of putting up all the plastic. The plastic I'm seeing now with her is clear plastic. Why would he have two different plastics? Who the heck knows? Um, so with her, he's trying to do something different. These people are sick. I feel like for, it's just like, for, oh, for now, I'm going to put these pieces of body parts in the deep freezer. And, like, he puts them in there. I don't know if he's in the garage anymore, though. He could be in that house in, like, a pantry or, like, this hallway that leads to the kitchen goes to outside there might be one of these deep freezers oh and then the two pieces of one leg i they're literally showing uh, me of them putting this leg on this thing like a rotisserie type thing an outdoor thing that you'd cook over an open fire like you might roast a pig on, I swear to God, and eating it. I and 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 they don't even care. And it's like they're insane or something. Like, and it makes me wonder, like, why am I seeing this? Like, would my worst imagination make this up? Like, feel free to discount it, and it could make my entire thing seem um um like nonsense, but you know what? I have to say it. They, they show me again. Okay, so I'll keep going. Yep, they're confirming this girl's body cut up. I'm just going to go blank a minute so they can start showing me. Whatever they want to show me. I'm seeing the girl again, so this is going to be about the girl. Feels like they just didn't want kids to like hamper up our life or whatever. Obviously, it feels like the mother of her is a sociopath. Like she just doesn't really have feelings. If anything, she's slightly amused by somebody else's weakness. It feels like he used a hacksaw part of the time and dismembered his daughter okay and, th and this is his stepdaughter I don't know who this relationship or whatever it would have been the stepfather or something I don't know but anyways it feels like yeah I see him using a hacksaw I'm not kidding and also a meat cleaver he may have tried an axe like it's, it sounds like he was trying a few things I mean used a few different things in in chopping this body up Okay, so now they're showing me. Okay, so they they showed where they put those parts. Um, now they're they're showing me the 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 abdominal part of a body with all the organs coming out. The mother. I feel like she likes killing. And I feel like if they roasted her leg, which is so crazy, I know, I don't even barely believe it, but this is what I'm seeing. I feel like them making sandwiches out of the meat. 
And if you go there, and if all this is real and exists, you find the body, then look in the freezer. Open any packages of meat. They might be in butcher paper. Um, they might be in foil with tape. It could be in baggy. Just look for frozen meat. It's so gross. The thing it would be cooked probably. Maybe I don't know. This is so gross. Something, some little piece of jewelry she was wearing may have, or a little sweater pin, or some little piece of something. It looks gold. So I'm going to ask them to clear that and take me back to when Tylee got murdered. He tried to use a hacksaw. So gross. He, he used the little axe things for that. So there's, there's, the, there's even something that almost looks like a medieval chopper. Not that big, but more the size of a hand axe. But say if it was like really weird but this seems to be upsetting alex at the moment a little worse than Lori. The, this part about the dismembering um he's doing it but he feels a little queasy and she's like harping for him to get quicker like i don't know if she's the one who did the axe on the knees like get with it like she it's like she it's she, she, it means nothing to her and um it's not that it means anything to Alex either, the death, but he's grossed out. I don't know if she wants him to disembowel Tylee. Um, yeah, so like if you took out the organs, kind of, the, you, you, the, all you got to do is jump them there and the animals would eat them right away. Uh, get rid of uh, the body quicker. Yeah. And so then, the, and then you have all these pieces of her. She's in like lots of pieces. There's lots of pieces, like her head's off. I see lots of pieces. Let's just say I see pile. I see pile of pieces. Lori doesn't even care, and she actually bitches at Alex the whole time. He helped her. He had no problem helping her murder Tylee. And the, the, he, where he's kind of grossed out is all his blood and gut stuff. Like, you know, gross, literally. Picking up innards insides of of this person he, he, he's grossed out i don't get him a feeling like oh poor charlie oh my niece i don't get that feeling but i get the feeling of him being grossed out and Lori bitching at him like she does not like it when there's weakness in other people it feels like she just goes in for the kill um as far as okay he's acting weak so that makes her pissed and she's taking energy and she's um, like uh, being really mean, ordering them around and stuff. Okay, so they take her body out and I feel like loaded the hefty bags full of body parts directly into there. And then carried it out and put it on the back of the truck like kind of quietly. And then they might have saved that piece so in case anyone was watching it would seem normal like they would be having this, you know, cooking this big piece of meat or whatever that that essentially was part of her leg um it feels like the girl is crying I, she can't believe i can't believe my mom would do that to me she said i was her best friend I'd, I'm. I hope. I, I hope she's alive, and I'm all wrong, and all that kind of stuff. That would be way better. Already dug down, and located uh, a what would appear to be a a mass of burnt flesh and charred bone. Okay. Um, do you recall? Approximately how deep down that was. I don't recall how, how deep it was. Okay. Um, did you observe them? Did you observe ERT take that mass out of the ground? Yes, I did. Okay. ERT uh, had gone back to the same spot where there was a mass of, of burnt 
flesh and, and bone and began excavating around that the best they could. Okay. Uh, and uh, what happened? They were ultimately able to, to dig completely around uh, the entire mass uh, to reveal what they were digging up. Okay. Were there any other identifying features of that uh, in that area or as part of that mass that drew your attention? Yes, there was. What was it? There was a melted green bucket that it appeared that the, the burnt flesh had been placed in. Uh, under the bucket was a partial human skull. And as that backhoe was expanding from our original 10 foot by 10 foot area, the backhoe uncovers two potential vertebrae. As I'm standing there waiting for the assessment to be made from the anthropologist, I caught an odor that I can associate with my experience with possibly being uh, decomposing you know, human remains. Okay. We eventually, the next significant thing is we hit a a bone, a bone, you know, sticking out of the ground, and it kind of leads into some uh, flesh. And then eventually we're able to excavate a few pieces. The major piece ends up being a pelvic piece. We knew at that point we had found human remains. That became then burial site number two Okay. And then the pieces that were recovered, and those pieces appeared to be burned. Some of them were pink still, so there's a lot of tissue still involved. And then again, it was pieces, so dismembered. And then those pieces were put in a body bag. The coroner was there, sealed up by the coroner. And then, so burial site number two, um, it was a little bit more complex for us, I think, but it was the same same process. There's a, there's a story to be told here at this grave. Um, so we wanna do the same thing, layer by layer, anything, noting any significance. The difficulty, I think, for us, for this one, was the way these human remains were found. So it was kind of this, for lack of a better term, it was kind of a mass of dismembered human remains. Burnt, partially burnt. And so we did the best we could. It was kind of hard to recognize, like what are we looking at here initially? You know, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. We know there's tissue here, there's organic matter here, and we just couldn't recognize what we were dealing with. But layer by layer, we tried to, we ended up just excavating all around this mass of human remains. And we ended up excavating all the way around it. And at the very bottom of this mass, we find, you know, this melted green bucket. And then to the bottom, the side of that green bucket, we eventually find a skull. And then to the side of that skull, we find a mandible with some teeth. That those are the significant things that you could finally see and recognize out of this mass. Okay. And so we did the, to the team did the best they could to kind of excavate around this. It came the decision point of, okay, now we need to try to, to lift these remains out of burial site two. What happened when you tried to do that? So when the team tried to lift the remains, the, this mass out of burial site two, it fell apart. So what ends up happening is just a, you know, a removal of pieces into the coroner's body bag. And then once we get the pieces into the body bag, um, our anthropologist and the coroner essentially do as best they can an inventory of what pieces we have so that I know as the team leader you know, how much more do we need to look for in this grave? 
In this next clip, you will hear Psychic Reverend Donna Serafina describe Chad Daybell's home in detail. January 31st, 2020. Rexburg police investigators receive an audio copy as well as written transcripts of details you will hear pertaining to the location of the deceased children. I feel like there's a little, um, it's not like a front porch area, but it's not a raised up porch. They're showing me, and I can't be 100% sure that it's attached to the house on the lake, but I feel like it is. And I feel like it's not a porch that's raised up, you know, like wooden, you know, porch, like on the craftsman house or whatever. It's more like um, just flat. It could be brick or something. It's either brick or concrete. It might have like a foot high kind of brick border around the little area and then it might have be big enough outside the front door to have like a couple chairs where maybe a couple ladies might be sitting and talking or something this is what i see i see pieces of this front porch the house might may have been well it feels to me well it's definitely built between the 50s and the 70s i feel like it's a one story but it could be now a two story like maybe someone came along later and added one more, you know, a bedroom on half the house or whatever. So that's why if I said one story and then you see a two story and you're like, oh, no, that's not it. Well, that's why it might even still be painted two different colors. Like if if the bottom story has one color of paint and then the that addition has like still they left it like wood brown where you stain the wood or whatever, something like that. And then they're like, oh, here's a little detached garage. Let's show Donna these decorations because she one time saw a detached garage like that. Detached garage, it's definitely detached from the house. So even if if you saw a little house like that and you know it's the house and one of these characters somehow related, you identify that house. It, there could possibly be an attached garage to the house or attached um, um, those carport things. That's possibility. I don't I don't see it, but I don't know. But maybe this thing that looks like a garage and it's about the size of a garage is was built to be a workshop for a hobbyist because it has a workbench on all three sides. If there's a fire pit and the fire pit has concrete, like it has concrete around it it's not like just a, a flat on the ground build your fire there's a little it's a it's a round ring okay so we're the group of men i'm with this group of men and we're walking up to look for the body the 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 one in black plastic with the robes which i believe is the boy is not that far in maybe 50 feet maybe Maybe, I mean, when I see it visually, I would guess that's only like 20, 30 feet, but it's kind of up a slope or something. And then as the slope kind of doesn't totally flatten out, but kind of has a gradual little bit of flatness, it's, it's right about there in between where it starts going up a little bit more again. That's... The, just to the left when you're walking inland, just to the left of the path or the way you're going there, the path. It's, it feels like there's a little bit of a path there. Maybe it's maybe it's not a man-made path. I don't know, but it feels like it won't be that hard to walk through there. Okay, so then it starts going up again. I'm feeling like this is where they might have went back when, when they got the um, girl's cut-up body. Like, I don't feel like they cut up the boy's body. A little past where they buried the boys. You you go up another slope. And this time it feels like he kind of veered off into the left. And then there's, um, I feel like there's some ferns back in there where they buried the um, body parts of the little girl. And I don't know if they brought all the body parts or if they're going to put them other places. Because I'm only seeing the one package that had, like, 
Her two arms, which were each cut, the elbow and the shoulder. Oh, and then the two pieces of one leg. It's closer to that fire pit, uh, right near that red barn there. <clears throat> Again, from the affidavit, a second site of interest was located behind a red unattached outbuilding located roughly in the center of the property near a fire pit, an area used as a pet cemetery. I'm seeing a little uh, headstone cross, um, like you would see at a graveyard. And Lori says something like, I'll just remember my little JJ there. Close enough, hey, like that or something like. But it feels like when you leave the area where you buried JJ, it feels like off to the right is um, a very small old graveyard, which probably, I don't know if there would be room in it anymore. Just some remnant of the past. But she's like happy. She's like celebrating. Like she's free now. She's free. She Several areas of disturbed ground were located. A buried cat and dog remains were found. And several other items of interest were found, including other bones, charred tissue, and charred bones, human remains, non-adult human remains. Right away I saw a star. But where I'm directed is if you look straight across from there, down to where where there might be an opening that either feeds the river or where the river goes away. I kind of get the feeling it's where the it feeds the river there, um, it, like a bottleneck or something, like if the lake is round and then there's a, looks like a bottleneck if you drew the thing, you know, but I feel like it's leading into the lake, of like a water stream, like from the mountains when the snow melts and stuff. But I don't know for sure. But I do feel like that. And my they're, they're directing my attention to there for reasons unknown to me. You find a body there. Because there, I was seeing a, like, okay, I was seeing the big trees right next to the river. And then I was seeing the big trees with sand. And so if you kind of went behind the um, this big boulder... Um, okay, what I'm seeing is a man and a woman, and they're carrying um, these, one person, they're carrying one person, uh, wrapped in a, a black, um, it's black plastic, So, and then it feels like um, the man is digging pretty hard there, and then covering that, that, it feels like it's the boy that was buried there. Investigators exposed a round object covered in black plastic. An FBI ERT member used a sharp instrument and made a small incision in the plastic. And a layer of white plastic was then observed. An incision was made in the white layer of plastic, exposing what would appear to be human remains, the crown of the head covered in light brown hair. The remaining dirt around the object was methodically removed, exposing what appeared to be a body, wrapped in black plastic. The black plastic appeared to be tightly wrapped around the body and secured <clears throat> with gray duct tape. So for burial site one, we started by removing this upper vegetation off to get a pic better picture without the vegetation of what it looked like. You could kind of see that raised berm and then eventually you could see what, what looks like stones protruding through the through the ground. So once we've removed the vegetation layer and as we're starting to go down through the layers of this of this grave, it's in, it's important to start noting these layers for this reason. So now we're starting to see the, the placement of stones on this grave. So someone's placed stones over this. And so now we're seeing how precise or how these stones are laid. And then you're also seeing roots from the tree, surrounding tree that are cut, showing the effort or showing how this was done. Yes, and then so once the pictures, the photographs and the scans are done of this layer, then we would remove those and then continue down. Okay, and what did you find further down? And then once these stones are removed, we then come across some thin 
boards that are underneath this level. So again, part of that process is once we remove those stones, kind of the next significant item is the boards that were underneath the stone. So again, someone's placed these boards over this grave site. And so this is telling that story, the effort somebody went through for some reason to put these boards there. Who owns this cabin? What is the name of the person? Are they a friend or a family member? It's definitely a cabin that multiple people who are part of these this group um, they have had gatherings there. I'm feeling that members of that group though have been there. I feel like Lori's been there. I feel definitely feel like Chad has been there. Uh, I feel like these people are associated uh, more closer friends with Chad. Um, I got chills about that. They're more associated with Chad than they are with Lori. Um, and I would like to say that Chad helped Lori um, to refer her to where set this up. Um, I, and I'm getting chills with that. Um, and I would like to say and see if um, Chad was aware that Lori was planning on murdering her children. And I'm getting very big chills with that. So did Chad help with the planning of it by arranging a location where he felt that she would never be seen? And that he, big chills, big chills, all alone, my whole legs are chills. So this is people of Chad, and Chad arranged the location because he knew they could get away with it there. Justice will be served. This is not the end.